Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders called for a ceasefire in Gaza when he spoke at the DNC last night. Let's watch. We must summon the courage to stand up to wealth and power and deliver justice for people at home and abroad. Abroad. We must end this horrific war in Gaza. <laughs> Bring home the hostages and demand an immediate ceasefire. Let us elect Kamala Harris as our president and let us go forward to create the nation we know we can become. Multiple pro-Palestinian protesters were arrested on the Democratic National Convention's second day. Groups led demonstrators through the streets of Chicago and began clashing with police near the Israeli consulate. So they are continuing to be active. Um, the issue of Gaza has now come up a couple times at the convention uh, with Bernie Sanders talking about it there. A few others have mentioned it uh, as well. Uh, do you think this is going to, you know, mollify the sort of people in the streets who are, you know, chanting genocide Joe and in some cases killer Kamala? I, you know, she's been, it seems to me she's been a little bit um, let off by the, by the progressives or forgiven or given some leeway to construct a policy or say something differently about them, even though she's been part of the same administration that has done all of the, according to the left, um, uh, genocidal support for what Israeli is doing. Um, she's been part of that. She hasn't really signaled any difference from it. Uh, she did, you know, call for a ceasefire um, at one point, say what was going on over there was bad. But uh, I, I don't know, is it, is it at all satisfactory for the protesters at this point? Yeah, I will say there's definitely a, a group of protesters who are present who are demonstrating because of how the current administration has handled this. And they're, they don't really care what they say at the DNC. They care about action. And they're protesting. It's petition of government for redress of grievances. They have a lot of grievances. There are people who are lifelong Democrats who have had over 100 family members killed because of what Israel has done with the support of the United States. And so will they stop if Kamala Harris says, I really want to cease fire, I'm open to an arms embargo? No, because what they're protesting is what Joe Biden has done, and what they're protesting is what the administration is continuing to do. I think that because they're at the table right now, and they've supposedly, according to Blinken, arrived at some kind of deal, that's good, but Kamala Harris has signaled she's not really open to having any restrictions on aid to Israel through one of her aides that was speaking to a group of donors. That happened yesterday. And so we do see her changing her tune a little bit at these rallies. Initially, she was interrupted, and she said, I'm speaking. At the very next rally, she was interrupted again by protesters, and she, react, she reacted differently. She did exactly what people critica, critical of her initial reaction wanted her to do, which was to take a moment and stop and say, no, okay, let's pause and address what these people are talking about. We need a ceasefire in Gaza. We also saw Raphael Warnock speaking, refer to the Palestinians as a people for the first time at the convention, and, and say that we need to do right by you know, the civilians in Israel and the civilians in Gaza who are roped up into this war because of you know, the yeah. leaders of the state of Israel and their constant assault on Gaza. So I think things are shifting, but not enough that they're not gonna protest for the rest of the DNC. We still can't get around the fundamental problem, the fundamental disconnect. You know, people like Bernie Sanders saying we need a ceasefire now. You know, in theory, I agree. Obviously, I don't want the violence or the fighting or the killing to continue. I think the number of dead, um, innocent Palestinians is stunning and bad, and I don't really want to um, support. Actually, I don't want to give American dollars to any other country's, you know, foreign military mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues. I, I just don't see why they should not be responsible for paying it. I don't know why it falls on Americans. But the fundamental problem is Israel has taken the position that Hamas is an illegitimate terrorist organization that has vowed to destroy Israel and that they will not be safe until its senior leadership 
surrenders, is killed, is defeated, is exiled, whatever. And so their position is there can't really be a ceasefire between a group that they want destroyed utterly and they're willing to continue fighting and killing and destroying Gaza in order to get that. And Hamas is not willing to surrender or step aside or let the people of, let the Palestinians pick different leaderships. Obviously, they're a theocratic, totalitarian terrorist organization. And so I don't see how a ceasefire is actually possible given those, given, given those, those red lines that Israel says no Hamas and Hamas isn't willing to step aside. So how can there be a ceasefire if that's the way it is? Yeah, and this idea that it's about the release of the hostages is crazy. The families of hostage members in Israel are very unhappy with Netanyahu because a lot of his actions, deciding to carpet bomb Gaza, has killed a lot of the hostages. There was the release of six bodies of hostages, five of which the IDF knew were dead. Um, you know, they were exchanged. And you have thousands of Palestinians held by the Israelis that are, are taken as prisoners of war. That's never a part of the negotiations. Whenever people talk about bringing the hostage home, hostages home, they refer to the hostages taken by Hamas, ignoring how many have been taken by Israel. And now we have on footage the rape and abuse of Palestinians in Israel. And you have the congressional body, the parliamentary body of Israel, debating whether or not it is okay for the IDF to rape soldiers, something that is against human rights law. And so, yes, I don't think it makes sense to expect Netanyahu to sign on to a ceasefire when he said he does not intend, no matter who the government is, Hamas or not, the Palestinians to have an independent government post-war denying them their right to self-actualization and self-government. And so the United States really needs to use their position of power to stop giving them weapons and say what you're doing is not okay because on so many levels and by so many metrics, it's clearly not. Well, I mean, I'm again, I'm, I'm fine with us not giving them any more military aid because I don't think American tax dollars should be spent in that way, really independent of how Israel is using it. But I also don't think... Uh, the American government should use our influence to what to force the Israeli government to put up with a terrorist organization on its borders. I'm not sure we would put up with that. Um, you, you said it's that that they're not willing to accept anyone being in control of the Gaza Strip. But I, I think their position is it just it can't be a terrorist organization. They have to have some veto power over who it is because uh, if it's like Hamas, they're not willing to accept that. Yeah, we're in a tough position because the occupation on Gaza, which is what put the Israeli border over the Palestinian border, yeah. is something that the United States funded and supported. So at what point do we pull out now? And I think that's, that's what's being negotiated now is what the terms will be, and that's going to be very difficult. We're going to continue to follow it, but of course, interesting to see what's going on around the DNC. More rising after this.